What's up, Twitch? You have to be so annoying to be on Twitch. Okay, Twitch it is, you guys. <laughs> All right. <Yeah. laughs> We're here at Tomorrow Lab in Chinatown in New York City. We're a company that creates new hardware products. I'm Ted. I'm Pepin. Both of our backgrounds are in design and engineering. We tear stuff apart, talk about how it's made, and imagine what it could be in, in the future. Cool. So we bought this on Amazon for $30. What is it? It is an LED projector. It's, uh, it's branded deeply, but it has no branding actually on the outside of the box, except for this little barcode on the top. I think what blew us away is just the price. It's super small. But it gets great reviews on Amazon. It gets great reviews. Four and a half stars from like a thousand people. So we really want to see what's inside of this thing and how it works and how they're able to make the price so cheap. This is not an unboxing video, so we're not going to narrate exactly everything we see here. That's a cardboard box. The first time we get to see the Deeply logo, which is literally the worst logo I've ever seen in my entire life. But I think the important thing, right, is that it has HDMI in, as well as a micro SD card, so you can play content from there. Should we power this thing on and just take a quick look at the image? Let's do it. So it's likely under these studio lights uh, that we won't be able to see much. I think the lumens rating on this, what does it say on the box? Three, uh, oh, we gotta get the box. The resolution is 320 by 240. That's Super pretty terrible. Low. You know what, it doesn't say the lumens, but it's, I know it's 400. Okay. So 400 is like a tenth as bright as our office projector. It's not gonna be very good, but in a dark room, you know, you could probably see a movie on there and enjoy it. I usually lead the mechanical side of things here. Ted leads the electronic side. So to be as inconsistent as possible, Ted's gonna do the honors. So these are self-tapping screws, Phillips head, they're really nice for assembly. They're not really great if you want to take something apart and put it back together frequently, but this isn't a battery door. It's really not supposed to come apart that often. Okay, wiggling, wiggling. Oh, yeah. It's pretty good. The other reason why you'd use an ABS and a styrene is because uh, those take paint really well. You can see the overspray on the back side of this, so they're just hitting it with a post-process of the paint. For creating different colors, it makes it really easy. You could create a blue one and a green one and a purple one. This is a really nice part design. It's got these grooves here, and then you've got a mating rib here. And then there's just a tiny little snap here and a couple locating features. So this just slides down and clicks into place. And that's the whole assembly. Okay, let's get into the electronics. Okay, so there's more screws. The next step is to take all the connectors off. Right, so we have we two Ziff-style uh, connectors and two other JSTs for the speaker and the fan. This connector, what's this one? This is for the fan. It's for the fan? Right. Oh, that keeps the, the heat sink cool? Yeah, which blows right. across the heat sink for the LED. Cool. I'm assuming these big wires are... That's got to be power, right? To, to the board or to the LED? I think it's to the LED. Right, because, because the power connector's right there. You've just got one central chip for the video processing. That's here. It looks like it's a BGA type, which also probably means this is a multi-layer board, although I can't, I can't tell. They did a good job making it as compact as possible. We have our third type of screw right there. Uh, it's actually our fourth type of screw. The elegance of this design is starting to decay a little bit. <laughs> it's part of the way innovation works in Shenzhen. You don't design a whole product, you design like a projector and then someone buys or just is given the designs for that projector and that, that person will innovate on it. All of these different companies are exchanging intellectual property basically for free. But the result of that is you're gonna get pieces that were designed by different groups and they're gonna have different sort of perspectives or different fasteners that they go to. What Pippin's taking apart here, this is a super bright LED. Problem is that it gets really hot. So we need to have a heat sink that's attached to the back of it. With this fan, you run the air across it to keep the whole thing cool. I can, I can desolder, resolder. Purpose of this is to take this off. Boom, I'm gonna put that back on.
I love this design because it is like a little physics lesson and it's a perfect little like layout of a light path. Everything just pulls right out. Watch the magic. So we pop this up. Oh, all right. This is our Fresnel lens. For who? Fresnel. Ah, Fresnel. Oh, Fresnel. Yeah, this is a big magnifier. And then we have a mirrored pocket here. This is a really nice part. If we were manufacturing this product in small quantities, mm. this little assembly right here would be $30. So the light passes through the magnifier and now, it, now it's being focused into a beam. So uh, here's the light path for a projector and Ted's gonna attach the LED. Here we go, blinky blinky. So this is basically the screen. This is the monitor right. of the device. The video is being displayed on here, but the weird part is that without the polarizer, we can't see, we can't see the video. We can't see the video, right? And we'll show a little demo of that in a second. What's cool is that right now, I can see it and it's dark and light because I'm wearing these polarized glasses. Hmm. But to everyone else at home, it just looks like a semi-clear display. So let's start with your eye and a light source. Let's call it the sun. The sun is emitting a bunch of photons. They're coming in as light waves, right? right. So we understand light to be a wave. For simplification, we're just going to talk about the electrical wave and not the magnetic wave. It's an electrical wave. And we'll call this Z. And Z is the direction that the wave is flowing. Is usually diagrammed as this, right? Mm -hmm. This is the sine wave, cosine wave, sine wave, right? Of a particle of light. If we take like a cross section of this, right? Right. And you look at the light waves that are coming at you. They're doing this and this and this. They're vibrating in all of these different directions, right? Right. When we want to polarize light, what happens is. You're just going to eliminate, um, reduce all of the other directions of light. Some smart person? Some smart person found out that a type of crystal called tourmaline, when you pass light through it, it would polarize that light. You have light coming in, going in all different directions, light coming out of it would just be going in one direction along that crystal plane. There we go. So if I can control the direction of the tourmaline, I can orient that in the direction of the exactly. beams that I want to come out of. Let's say we want to use two pieces of tourmaline. The first piece of tourmaline that's oriented in a certain direction. Then we add a second piece of tourmaline. Um, let's say we orient it slightly different. What will happen here is that the component height will be reduced. So okay. these are, it's hard to draw, but those are smaller. And then if you were to keep rotating it, Final thoughts on the Deep Leap Projector. I'm a fan. I mean, it's pretty useless because the brightness level is so low, but if you find yourself in a dark place, like a <laughs> basement or the woods with no stars at night, it works pretty well. So before this, I was just sketching some ideas. The current configuration is a right angle where you have the fan blowing across and you're bending the light. And I was thinking, well, could you have one that's sort of more vertical stack where you don't bend it? just everything is stacked up. And maybe I like the idea of putting it on a bicycle to like, you know, maybe map some stuff out. Yeah. We talked about building a, maybe like a mini TV out of it by creating just like a short projector screen and, and screwing with the optics a little bit. If you like this, let us know in the comments below. Uh, if you want us to tear down other things, also let us know. Or just send them to us. Our address is in the description. <laughs>